Hello everyone. My name is Kumar, and in this video, we will understand about Professor David Garvin's Eight Dimension of Quality. Quality is a highly subjective attribute, one person's required standard is another's pointless perfectionism. So, how can you judge quality in your workplace? Your own views are usually pretty easy to define with a little careful thought. But how about those of your team members, clients or customers? This is where Professor David Garvin's 8 dimension of quality comes in. The model helps you to understand quality and allows you to find out what it means to your key stakeholders. Garvin published his model in the Harvard Business Review in 1987, a time when U.S. consumers were no longer confident about the quality of U.S. made products. He felt that traditional quality management methods were flawed because they aimed to protect customers from what they don't want, by avoiding faults and delays, for example. Instead, he argued that businesses should focus on finding out how to actively please their customers by delivering more of what they do want. Garvin argued that you'll always need your customer's approval to succeed, whatever standards you might set for yourself. So, his model helps you to look at those customers' perceptions of the quality of your own and your competitors, services or products. According to Garvin, you can develop an aggressive strategy to gain or hold markets if you judge quality in this way. He said, quality is not simply a problem to be solved. It is a competitive opportunity. Let's take a look at the eight aspects or dimensions of quality that Garvin identified and then consider how you can apply them. First dimension is performance. This refers to a product's main use. How good is it, objectively, compared with the competition? Garvin gives the examples of a car's acceleration and fuel efficiency. Second dimension is features. These are the bells and whistles of products and services. They're secondary to the main use, but sometimes they're equally or more important to customers. Example complementary snacks and drinks on a plane. Reliability is the third dimension. Reliability refers to how likely is a product to work properly or not in a specified period. This dimension is more or less important depending on the product's or service's purpose. For example, engine is the most important part of an automobile, so you need it to be highly reliable. Conformance is the fourth dimension. Conformance is how well and how consistently does your product or service meet established standards. Garvin's thoughts about this dimension were influenced by Jinichi Taguchi's ideas. Taguchi challenged the assumption that a product either passes or fails. He showed that sales fall gradually, following a precisely predictable pattern, as conformance worsens. Examples of poor conformity include misspelled labels, delays in delivery, and processing errors. Durability is the fifth dimension. This is a measure of product life. How much use a customer gets from a product before it deteriorates, becomes redundant, or is no longer worth the cost of repair. For example a pair of sports shoes only needs to last a season, but a all-in-one office printer should work at least for 5 years. Serviceability is the sixth dimensions of quality. This dimension refers to how quickly and easily can the product be brought back into action after it breaks down. Here, Garvin considered both technical repair and how customer care and complaints are handled. Aesthetics is the seventh dimension. More and more products and services routinely provide the first six dimensions to a high standard. So this very subjective dimension is becoming increasingly important. Your product's look, smell, taste, feel, or sound might be the only quality that differentiates it from another. Example how attractive a restaurant owner can serve pizza to their customers. Perceived quality is the eighth dimension. Customers' conclusions are drawn from the product's various tangible and intangible aspects, ranging from how heavy a laptop might be to its brand and associated advertising. Garvin said, reputation is the primary stuff of perceived quality. For example people decide to buy Apple's products based on the reputation that the brand has created in the market over the years. Garvin says that you don't have to satisfy all eight dimensions to gain market advantage and that, in some cases, they can even be mutually exclusive. For example, increasing a car or computer's performance might threaten its reliability. 
So, decide which of the dimensions are most relevant to your team or organization's work, and how you are going to measure your performance in each of them. Garvin's model helps you to decide on your goals for delivering great results. Thanks for watching this video. Hope this video was helpful. For more similar content, please subscribe our channel.